Good day, grade 11s. My name is Kaden Mazokere. I'm the author and publisher of the Distinction Bound Student Textbooks. Well, le welcome to lesson number 62. Uh, in this lesson, we are going to look at a relationship between markets. Okay, this is a topic that comes well uh, just after elasticity. So that topic prepared us for this particular lesson. Okay. So uh, as usual, we start by revising our homework and the homework that we had uh in the previous lesson is quite simple it's uh, a definition of a couple of terms which you probably know by now okay so here are the answers to the definitions that uh, are required for that particular activity so without wasting any of your time let's jump into today's lesson demand and supply relationships okay so this is lesson number 62 as i've already said demand and supply relationships and you see that this lesson is uh directly linked to the last part of uh the previous uh topic which was uh income no no that was cross elasticity of uh demand now cross elasticity helped us tell whether goods are uh substitutes uh complements or unrelated okay so in this part here uh it, we are going to take it a step further and uh draw some graphs now we're not going to calculate um uh, like we did income elasticity where we say percentage change in uh quantity demanded for for uh, good a divided by the percentage change in the price of good b we are not going to calculate any of that. However, we are going to draw some graphs. Uh, in this lesson, I think we have, uh, I think, I don't know, eight graphs that we are going to draw, uh, one from the other like that, like that, okay. So without wasting much of your time, let's get into today's lesson and see what it has uh, in store, okay. Uh, demand relationships. Demand refers to how much uh, of a product or service is desired by Bias. And then quantity demanded is the amount of a product people are willing and willingness again, I'll say means you are also able. So willing to buy at a certain price, the relationship between price and quantity demanded is known as demand relationship as simple as that. Okay. So we're going to start with, um, substitutes in consumption. You will see that with this substitutes in consumption, we'll look at two sides. First, we are going to look at, okay, what if this one goes up, what happens to the other? If these goods are substitutes, uh, I'm going to use tea and coffee, okay? Then we look at the same substitutes in consumption, but now if initially we had looked at an increase in price, uh, we will now look at a decrease in price. So once you understand the first one, the rest are going to be easy, okay? While there's nothing quite like a good cup of coffee to start your day, a cup of a cup or two of strong tea isn't a bad alternative. That's quite true. Yes. Tea is what economists will then call substitute for coffee. Simple as that. A pair of goods uh, are substitutes if a rise in the price of one good makes consumers more willing to buy the other good. So substitutes are usually goods that uh, in some way serve a similar function. For instance, uh, a, a taxi will substitute a bus. A bus will substitute a taxi. You cannot be in both at the same time because you cannot board a bus and a taxi at the same time. It's impossible, okay? Uh, when you're wearing sneakers, you cannot at the same time wear formal shoes, something like that, okay? So it's either you wear formal shoes or you wear some sneakers and you won't wear both of them at the same time. So these two will substitute one another. So it also means when it comes to buying, if you have money to buy a pair of something to wear, uh, it could be a pair of shoes or a pair of uh, sneakers. Okay. So these two are used, you know, not at the same time. They are used one after the other just like a substitute in soccer when this one comes out the other one comes on so yes something like that so uh we have other examples if you are at a concert you might not you cannot at the same time be at a theater where there there is a play there and you are watching something there if you are, you either take a muffin or a donut because uh, i don't think you take a bite of a muffin and then 
next bite is a donut and then a muffin but you know that you can take a muffin and a cold drink so that like you can take a bite from a muffin and then you sip uh, from your cold drink so that means those two the last two i gave they are compliments and these ones that you are looking at muffins and donuts they become substitutes uh, a train and an airplane so it's either you take a train or you fly so these become substitutes my example was a bus and a taxi so yeah same thing uh, i'm talking about the same thing there so a rise in the price of the alternative good induces some consumers to purchase the original good instead of it shifting demand for the original good to the right suppose there is a price decrease in the price of coffee from let's say 18 rand to 15 rand as i will show you in the graph that's coming just after this yes there we have the the the, the graph so if you're looking at what you see there um the this is this here is demand for uh what do you call it this here is demand let me let me you take the pointer okay using the pointer here this is demand for where is it oh this is the demand curve for coffee and this is the initial demand curve for tea so what we see here is coffee is being sold at 18 rand and tea is 13 rand okay but now we want to see what would happen to this you know uh, what would happen to demand for tea if the price of coffee would go down so if coffee goes down from 15 uh, from 18 to 15 rand what is going to happen is there's going to be a movement along the demand curve which we we discussed in grade 10 that this is caused by a change in price are we clear uh, if you remember the lesson I did in grade 10 or if you have my textbook in grade 10 I was using an example of coffee beans and I used a demand schedule for 2002 and 2006 yes if you want you can go and check out the video I'm referring to but this here is a movement along the demand curve which is being caused by a decrease in price from 18 to 15 okay and then we have uh, that will cause according to my numbers an increase in consumption for coffee from 40 to 50. now the question is what would happen to its substitute which is tea well as people consume more coffee like you see from 40 to 50 there's going to be a decrease in the consumption of tea but take note the price of tea remains the same in this case but what happens demand for tea will drop as people prefer to drink coffee because of the new price which has gone down so it's obvious that uh, when we look at the other case where if we take uh, a case where coffee is going to go up you see that a different scenario will happen here okay so the next few slides are explaining the same thing so i'm just going to scroll through the the, the slide the what do you call them the words and uh, in case you didn't quite get my explanation verbally, you can pause and read uh, the slides that are coming because they are simply explaining the same graph. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the next graphs, but like I said, I'm going to go through the slides as well. These words, you can just go through them. Some of them may not be addressing the same graph. So yes. Uh, you can have a look here and you see here they're talking about coffee the same thing so you might as well just go through this and uh, see what happens okay and I pointed this out as well the price of tea stayed the same all right and so I think we're done then let's move on to the next scenario we are still having our coffee oh no no so I started by looking at a different one. I thought maybe I finished that and then I came to this. Okay, what, whatever the case is, I can also explain what's going on here. So here we have, um, this is not correct. This cannot be saying substitutes because coffee and sugar are not substitutes. But I'm going to use it as substitutes. Then what I'm going to do, because I knew that the next graph would be talking about coffee and tea again. Okay. So to make this make sense, because I think the one for 
compliments will come so what i'm going to do is i'll just take this out and write t here and explain it the same way i was planning to explain it right so coffee was uh how much coffee was 15 rand and then the price of coffee went up to 18 rand so due to that increase uh in the price of coffee um there is going to be a decrease in what in the consumption or in quantity demanded uh it would decrease from 50 to 40 as you can see here but now uh, the reason why we demand less is because the price has gone up but notice what has happened to tea the price of tea remained the same at 13 rand so as less people drink coffee they will switch to tea so there's going to be a shift of the demand curve for tea to the right because nothing is going to change to the price of tea basically people are drinking tea because they find coffee a bit more expensive compared to what it was before okay so again just like the previous one uh, there's going to be explanations on how this whole thing is happening okay now let's move on to the next one which is oh so here it's now talking about compliments okay so sometimes a fall in the price of one good makes consumers more willing to buy another good such uh, pairs of goods are known as compliments so compliments are usually uh, goods that are consumed at the same time for example we have a couple of examples here computer comes with software uh, cappuccino can go with bread petrol can uh, a car comes with petrol so if prices of cars go down people will buy them but then it will automatically mean that the price of pe the, the demand for petrol is going to increase because these goods are used together okay so due to the fact that consumers like uh, like to consume a good and its complement together a change in the price of one of the goods will affect demand for its complement and look here we are not saying it will increase or decrease it depends on the change so if the change is going up then demand will decrease if the change is going down then demand for the other one will increase as simple as that okay so we have that inverse relationship right so complements and consumption in particular uh, when the price of one good rises the demand that's basically what i was just saying here uh, the demand for its complement will decrease shifting the demand uh, curve for the complement to the left and then on the other hand uh, if the price was to what to decrease then it will shift to the right so the october 2006 rise in starbucks cappuccino prices uh, is likely to have uh, precipitated a leftward shift of the demand curve for bread which uh, you know would complement the cappuccino as people consumed fewer cappuccinos and bread likewise when the price of one good falls quantity demanded for its complement rises which is not the case with a substitute it will decrease okay shifting the demand curve for the complement to the right but if it was a, a substitute it would shift it to the left this means that if for some reason the price of cappuccino falls uh, when uh, we should see a rightward shift of the demand curve for bread as people consume more cappuccinos and bread suppose the price of coffee goes up from 12 to okay so now it's taking us to a graph so i'm not going to look at that i'm just going to go to the graph so here's what we have here now this is correct these are complementary goods coffee and tea complement one another okay so let's have a look uh, here we are seeing a drop in the price of coffee. So basically it means coffee is going to be cheaper. Then there's going to be an increase in consumption for coffee. But we are not talking about tea anymore. We're saying what do you think is going to happen? So if goods are complementing one another, basically if this increases, that increases. And if this decreases, that decreases. It's simple to understand. Okay, so this lesson might not be that long just because of how easy things are to understand in this lesson okay so in other words the quantity demanded same thing same thing same thing like we saw there 
uh, the same things I was explaining in the graph are written here. So what you can do is just go through them. If you want, you can write notes on them so that in class you can also participate and you can also add to what your teacher might be uh, explaining. And uh, if you need clarity, we have a comment section down below. Comment, tell me, ask questions, uh, you know, add some, you know, points if you want. All that will be appreciated. Okay. A price increase in coffee yes 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 that's all the graph i thought it was a different thing then like i said uh the same is true with a decrease in quantity uh for coffee that would happen also with sugar but what's going on here if price goes up we drink less so if we drink less coffee we are using less sugar because we are not drinking the coffee so basically these go together if this was tea then here we'll change the word complement to substitutes and the demand curve would have to shift to the right. So if it goes from 8, it would go maybe to a 10, to a 9, to 12, whatever the case is. It's all up to us. What matters is um, we want to see the direction of the shift. So it's either a shift to the left or it shifts to the right. So it's as easy as that. Okay. Now, in conclusion, Let's have a look at a couple of factors here. And uh, I would have liked to, you know, block this, this side, this whole side. If I was to do this lesson once again, I would block this side so that we do the thinking together. Okay. So if A and B are substitutes, just like what? If um, tea and coffee, yes. And the price of tea increases demand for coffee would increase okay do you see that if the, if they are substitutes like we see here uh they, they, they would move in the same direction an increase in the price of coffee would cause an increase in the demand for its substitute which is tea and if the price of coffee falls demand for tea would decrease because people would drink coffee do you see that we are talking about the same thing that we were doing in the graphs? So just like I said, here we are concluding. Okay. If A and B are complements, so we are having coffee and sugar here, and the price of coffee increases, demand for sugar would decrease because we'll drink less coffee. And the price of uh, sugar decreases, then demand for coffee, for, for the, I'm doing it again. And the price of coffee decreases, demand for sugar would increase because we drink more coffee which goes along with sugar so this whole thing here is the graphs that we were drawing but let's look at other things here it take it's taking us back to uh, here this will be income elasticity okay so if a and b if a is a normal good and income rises look what would happen demand for a will increase because it's a normal good and if income falls, demand for A will, will decrease. So if a good is normal, it goes along with the direction of income. And if a good is inferior, it goes in an inverse direction or opposite direction with the level of income. Because if income rises, demand for an inferior good will decrease. And if income falls, because when you don't have much money, you consume more of such things. Another thing that I can point out will be like, uh, let's take a chicken, for example. Okay. Uh, which parts of a chicken do you think people would buy more of if income levels go up? Uh, it will be more drumsticks, things like that, you see? But if income levels would drop, it would be more of the inside stuff, like more intestines, more gizzards, more the head more feet chicken feet you know what i'm saying so yeah it will then mean on a chicken we have different pieces some of them may be said to be normal the ones that we will consume more of if our income levels go up and some of the parts of a chicken could be said to be inferior because we consume more of them when our income levels are low and less of them if our income levels uh, increase so that's it Right. The other one is change in consumer taste. Let's see. If the tastes change in favor of A, demand for A will increase. If the taste changes against A, demand for uh, A will decrease. 
And this taste can be influenced by so many factors. And nowadays, I would say it can be so uh, mostly influenced by social media. You know, this thing of status, posting and stuff, uh, you know, people can gain a liking depending on influence. Okay. That's why they call them influencers, people on Instagram and uh, other platforms where they simply influence others and they just start following those who follow. See, that's why they call it follow me on, follow me on. Yeah. I'm influencing you, so follow me. You want to be like me, something like that. Right, then uh, again, we're still going with the same uh, idea. If, uh, oh no, it's no longer that, it's now changing expectations. Okay, so if the price of A is expected to rise in the future, demand for A will increase today. Uh, I can give an example for with petrol. If there is an expectation, like normally they'll tell you petrol is going up midnight today, what happens today? People would go and queue up and fill up their tanks and so on. That's basically what is being said here. And if the price of A is expected to fall in the future, same, same price, I'll give petrol as an example. If today you wanted to top up your petrol and you are driving towards a petrol station and you were planning to go and put a full tank, if the news say petrol is going down tomorrow, you uh, you will not go to the petrol station anymore if the petrol you have can get you home. So you just get home and then the next morning you go and get a full tank at a cheaper price. So demand for A will decrease today. Simple. If A is a normal good and income is expected, look here, we're talking about expectations. So if A is a normal good and income is expected to rise in the future, demand for A may increase today. It's more like what? Uh, you, you hear that your income is going to go up. Come on, you might begin to move, something like that. Like you might begin to plan for moving. If your income is expected to go up, you start searching for property, in those areas that will go along with your level of income that will have gone up same applies to other goods that you've always wanted uh, the fact that your income is expected to go up the money that you are keeping aside maybe you might use that to buy those things because you feel like yes now i can afford it so if there's an expectation that your income would go up your demand for uh for that normal good will go up today and if income is expected to fall in the future then you know that demand for a may decrease today as well like um if you are expecting to lose your job or you're expecting to uh like be retrenched or things like that you you you, you are not going to buy more of these normal goods okay so i i used an example of uh, milk before i think if you expect your income to drop you might start stocking powdered milk because you know that things are going to be tough in future which is uh the opposite of what you do if you expect your income to go up okay this is easy however what if the good is inferior and income is expected to rise in the future then demand for that inferior good may may decrease today and if um income is expected to fall in the future demand for that inferior good may increase today simple 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 then the last one which basically is the last for the whole lesson change in the number of consumers if the number of consumers uh, of a rises market demand for a will increase and if the number of consumers of a falls the market demand for a decreases well thank you so much grade 11s and uh, this has brought us to the end of uh, today's lesson as usual like subscribe invite a friend and thank you so much i'll see you in the next lesson god bless